This is Digital Wonderlust. I know what I'm going to do tomorrow and the next day and next year and the year after that. I'm shaking the dust of this crummy little town off my feet and I'm going to see the world. Three rings for the elven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone, nine for mortal men doomed to die, one for the dark lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all and in the darkness bind them in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Hello there, my name is Strider and first of all a happy new year. I've got a special show lined up for you this month that plots yet another quest into the digital landscapes of gaming and how they affect us. It's a special of sorts, and one I've ummed and ahed about for a while. You see, as each month we hack away at the vast mine of psychogeography, we realise that it really is quite infinite. However, recently I've become interested in what inspires us to create digital landscapes, as well as how they make us feel when exploring them. But more than that... As a researcher of psychogeography, I am very much interested in the ways in which the same place can be layered with varying memories and impressions. How standing in the same place, either physically, digitally or just imaginatively, can bring these shared memories into alignment. How we tag places without realising and uncover the tags of others. Therefore, for this special, I will be looking at four mediums to test this out. A book, a film, a game and a country. Each of which have explored the same place brought into alignment through a word, a frame, a pixel and a coordinate. Due to the size of this show, I'm going to incorporate two games this time round, but both that exist in the same series. The book is J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. The films are Peter Jackson's adaptations of these books. The games are Electronic Arts cross-platformers The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers and The Return of the King. And the country is mainly that of New Zealand, where the film was made. First things first. I know there are lots of other games out there set in Middle-earth, and the reasons I've chosen not to look at them are as follows. Firstly, I want to examine a digital landscape that has a fixed path, and secondly, I haven't played any of the others. Therefore, these two chosen games will be our guide, and each digital landscape they present will be compared with those written by Tolkien, realised by Jackson, and in some instances experienced by me who walked them. This first episode will focus on the first part of The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, both my favourite book and film in the series. However, it does not have its own game, and instead appears in the game The Two Towers, as a series of flashbacks. So then, are we sitting comfortably? Let's begin. right away this was going to be an epic film so that started the relationship off with uh, New Line Cinema and Peter Jackson um, you know in that early 2000 time frame that was followed up by um, several trips down to New Zealand to visit the actual set to meet with Peter to meet with the other filmmakers and just really get plugged into to the filmmaking process and you know we started receiving assets um, in late 2000 um, both from both the Two Towers, the upcoming film, and the Fellowship of the Ring, which was in production at that time. So uh, right away, it was just a close collaboration off the bat. So our, our overall goal is to is to really immerse the player in the world of of Peter Jackson's Middle Earth, and the game story progresses along the high points of both the Fellowship of the Ring and the upcoming Two Towers film. Uh, the game is centered around an action adventure uh, fighting experience, 
once you get to battle all those memorable monsters and orcs from, from both films. The game The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, begins with you being thrown into the thick of the battle. It is the year 3441 in the Third Age, at the foot of Mount Doom in Mordor, in the land of Middle-earth. We are in the War of the Last Alliance, a team-up between men and elves, who take on an army of ugly creatures known as orcs, led by their leader Sauron, the bearer of the One Ring. 1954, The Fellowship of the Ring, J.R.R. Tolkien, Book 2, Chapter 2, The Council of Elrond. At the Council of Elrond, Elrond recounts to Frodo Baggins the story of the last alliance of men and elves. I beheld the last combat on the slopes of Oroduin, where Gilgalad died and Elendil fell, and Narsil broke beneath him. But Sauron himself was overthrown, and Isildur cut the ring from his hand with the hilt shard of his father's sword, and took it for his own. 2001. The Fellowship of the Ring. Peter Jackson. <laughs> But the power of the ring could not be undone. 2002. The Two Towers. Electronic Arts. Thrown into the middle of the battle itself, we play as Isildur, son of the king, and have to hack and slash our way through the hordes of twirling goblins and armoured orcs. Above us stands Oroduin, and next to us a pool of bubbling lava. The air is thick with smoke and dust. 2008. New Zealand, North Island, Tongariro National Park. My first day in Tongariro, a vast desert of volcanic rock and dust. It's all pretty alien here. Mount Narahoe looms in the distance, and I realise I'm standing on the same slope in which an army of elves once stood on. It's a weird sensation, having seen the film so many times, to be able to visualise the panning of the camera while stood here. The most notable feature that connects all of these landscapes is the rock. Miles and miles of barren nothingness. A volcanic desert that is really quite beautiful. I couldn't stop taking photos of it when I was there. It was also fantastical, like the surface of the moon or something. I remember when I first started walking up the slope, I felt this strange sense of deja vu. In my head I saw the sweeping camera shot across the army of Mordor, and straight away I was taken into the Battle of the Last Alliance. Whilst Tolkien does not let us glimpse the event itself in the book, Jackson throws us straight into it twice, first through the prologue and then in Elrond's account to Gandalf. I'm torn with this decision. I like the fact that in the books there is a transition from the greenery of the Shire to the aridity of Mordor. However, at the same time, the prologue hints at what is to come and what has been, and the weight of this little band of gold. In the game, the prologue allows you to have an active role in the history of Middle-earth, even though your character Isildur ultimately leads to the downfall of men, there are echoes here that will be picked up in the last level of the next game. As in the book and film, Mount Doom stands tall above us, and the volcanic and temperamental nature of the landscape is prevalent. It feels like an extended camera shot, as we don't bridge points in a narrative, but stretch one of these points. It's merely a taster of things to come.
After this level, we fast forward to the year 3018, in the Fourth Age, to a ruined small ring of rocks called Weathertop, in which we have to fend off the bearer of Sauron's prized possession, playing as Isildur's heir, Aragorn. The Herefordshire Beacon, Malvern, England. Tolkien based Weathertop on this location, one which I've hiked up numerous times due to the fact that it sits pretty much in my parents' back garden. It is part of a series of hills known as the Malvern Hills that divides the counties of Worcestershire and Herefordshire. The word Malvern is derived from the Welsh word Malfrin, meaning Bear Hill. It is surrounded by the remains of an old British Iron Age fort named British Camp. In January 2011, I took a walk up the hill and was instantly hit by how bleak and exposed it is. 1954, The Fellowship of the Ring, J.R.R. Tolkien, Book 1, Chapter 11, A Knife in the Dark. In the first days of the North Kingdom, they built a great watchtower on Weathertop. Amonsul, they called it. It was burned and broken, and nothing remains of it now but a tumbled ring, like a rough crown on the old hill's head. On the top they found, as Stride had said, a wide ring of ancient stonework, now crumbling or covered with long-aged grass. But in the centre, a cairn of broken stones had been piled. These were blackened as with fire. About them the turf was burned to the roots, and all within the ring the grass was scorched and shriveled, as if flames had swept the hilltop, but there was no sign of any living thing. 2001, The Fellowship of the Ring, Peter Jackson This was the great watchtower of Amonsul. We shall rest here tonight. These are for you. Keep them close. I'm going to have a look around. Stay here. 2002, The Two Towers, Electronic Arts. Playing as Aragorn, we used the fire in the centre of Weathertop to deter the ring wraiths, who have arrived to kill Frodo the ring bearer. Fortunately, we only have one hobbit to save, as Sam, Merry and Pippin are nowhere to be seen. The Weathertop ruins, um, we found a brilliant location for it. It, it, was, it, it was up in the uh, Port Waikato area, great sort of limestone washed away. Uh, standing on top of uh, Weathertop, there's the road in, there's a hilltop, and it drops away quite rapidly down below. This is the, um, the hollow on the western side of Weathertop. It's got a good, good size to it. In terms of the location, we never intended to build anything. The weather top that you see in the movie exists um, in physical form in terms of the wide shots because of a visual effect shot. And with respect to once the hobbits are at the summit and surrounded by the wraiths and then saved in turn by Aragorn, you know, that's actually just a soundstage. So the location itself never had to deal with a build. And as a result, that was the location that, you know, we could sort of, you know, hump the equipment in or chopper the equipment in to kind of, kind of, to kind of do on the day. The recurring motif throughout these varying interpretations of the same landscape is the Ring of Stone. In Malvern, there is nothing to suggest that a fort existed here, except for the distinctive shape of the land. In Tolkien's book, Weathertop is just a ring of stones or an old campfire. Jackson, however, expands on this, widening the Ring of Stones to become the ruins of an old tower, which is expanded on further in the game to give Aragorn the necessary room to circumnavigate it. Weathertop feels a lot more contained and claustrophobic here. So we have a landscape that has essentially travelled from Malvern via the fictional land of Middle-earth, then Port Waikato, the filming location in New Zealand, before being played in a game. 